the new uh, buzzword? Not polymore, pop polymer, polymer, polyamorous, po- yeah, polyamorous. Have you opened yourself yeah. up to something like that? Um, I've uh, I haven't done polyamorous. No, that's not my thing. But I've uh, I've dated men as a cover up. You know, like in high school, I I dated men. Like when I got out of high school, right before I came out, like. You know, I indulged with a man. I had sex with one man one time just to, you know, make sure. I wanted to make sure. Like, some people won't check that avenue, but I wanted to make sure. Like, I knew what I felt, for, you know, for women, but I needed to make sure. And that's when I became comfortable. Like, no, I don't want this. Like, it wasn't a bad encounter with that person. But it was just like, this ain't it. Like, I know this ain't it. Okay, I got I got it. Oh, okay, and, okay, I got Ooh. <sighs> Okay, okay, Valencia, me and you open, right? We we open, right? Yeah, we, we, we definitely, for sure, okay. for sure. Okay, so Valencia, listen, listen. The man got the the man got the work downstairs, but when you get with a woman and the woman puts on her work, what's the difference? I mean, she putting it's in- the person. It's like it's it's the connection that I have with the woman, but it's like. Don't get me wrong. I don't require what what the man has with a woman. I don't require that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now, if you with somebody and, and y'all get you know that comfortable to to you know have that type of experience, then so be it. But I don't require that. Like certain women that I've been with, like they want to you know try that with you, you know, and that's that's fine. Like if you're not willing to explore every avenue, then they'll they'll try it with somebody else. Like. You have to be sex. A sexual encounter should not be like limited. Honestly, like right. it, it's gonna be certain stuff that you're just like, no, nah, I just really don't want to try that. Like that's just not for me. But it shouldn't be so limited to the point where somebody just don't even feel comfortable to tell you who they are and how they like things. Okay. Now, what if I allow a woman to be free? Okay. Now, now you know the the thing with men, right? You know they they mm-hmm. come. They they come across alternative women and and they be mm-hmm. like they you know when when you tell them like yo my bad bro I'm I'm into women I fuck with women I only I only mm-hmm. deal with women and then you get the mm-hmm. you, you know you get the condescending reaction from a guy like oh well you just haven't had that good D what what do you say to that what do you say to that. I, I, now, like now that I'm older, it doesn't offend me. I don't know why. Now that I'm older, like I understand that they want to prove that they are better than somebody else. That that really is the thing with with having an encounter with somebody. They want to make you feel like your last encounter didn't even matter compared to them. So of course somebody gonna say that. So it's like I can't be mad at them for thinking highly of themselves. Like I can't. That's all it is. It's a it's a it's a mind game to manipulate you into giving them a shot just to prove that you aren't who you said you are. And if they can prove that point, that's why a lot of men still pursue women who claim to be lesbians, who claim to be just, you know, out to, uh, even with, with men encounters, like men, like, I'm straight. No, some, some men aren't just straight. Like, and they, they just prove in theory, but you can't prove no theory with me. Cause I've tried it already, and I know it ain't for me. You can't prove nothing with me. I said what I said, and I'm standing on it. Oh, you, say, you say you can't prove no dog. No, this ain't no theory test over mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, ain't no ain't no theory proven here. So listen, Valencia, I you know I watched this movie back in the day. It it, it, it was called Menage Trial with my guy. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, you you I don't know if you probably seen the movie, but this is like a real old school movie, and it and and it kind of it kind of put it a question in my head. Like the dude, mm-hmm. you know, the dude and his wife, you know, you you know, they married and everything. Uh, she can. Mm-hmm. Damn, you coming back out of the car? You know, if I was part of the camera culture, I'll take a picture of your fine ass. Look at you. The hair's real, the ass real, the okay. Anyway, the, the female that <laughs> she keep walking back and forth. I'm losing my mind over here. Anyway, so <laughs> so the guy, so the guy kept asking, you know, he kept, you know, persuading his wife to do a threesome, mm-hmm. 
you know, he kept persuading, persuading, persuading. And then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. the, 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 the female was like, fuck it, let's do it. But right. towards the towards the end of the movie, uh towards the end of the movie, the female mm-hmm. started getting feelings for the other female. Right? Right. So my my mm-hmm. my my thing is this. Do you think do you think because of the guy, you know, that kept pressuring his wife to, you know, to do the menage a try? Mm-hmm. Is is it his fault for her being turned out? No, she probably already had, uh, you know, the urge, you know, to be with a woman. But, you know, she was still, you know, attracted, committed, and in and, and, and love with that person. Like, but once you open that, that door, like, once you open that door, hey, <laughs> once you once a woman's been with another woman, I'm sorry. Unless that woman end up hurting that person, like, you gonna always long for that that feeling. It's like the most intimate you'll ever be. It's it's very intimate. It's very seductive. It's very addictive. Mm. Hey, the, 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 I don't think I want to open up that door. <laughs> <laughs> I need I, I need you in my look, life, baby. Think about it. Look, think about it. Why, why do you, you know, like women so much? You know what I'm saying? Why do you? It's the same reason men love women. It's the same reason women love women. Mm. It's the same thing. The smell, the hair, the walk, the talk, the personality, the vibe, the, you know, the encounters. Like, that all that all plays a part in it. We feel the same way y'all feel. Man, y'all better take note. We y'all y'all better take notes. So whenever y'all start fucking around and and being that being that jerk, probably might be uh-huh. that fine, probably might be that fine. That's ass when the woman woman's flabby. The- yeah, mm-hmm. like I'm I've been talking to a woman uh recently, you know, and mm-hmm. we've been talking for like a year, mm-hmm. and we just talking, but you know, I'm, we're not together none of that. Like she was married to a man, like. Mm-hmm. She was married to a man, like always been with men, but she knew she liked women. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, me and her been, you know, having all the encounters and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. hey, no greater feeling, I guess. You know, <laughs> it is what it is. All right. So, Valencia. Like, and man, I, I keep saying it to a count of women like that. That's what's up. Valencia, listen, how how about, let's let's talk about your, let's let's talk about your, your piercings and your tattoo culture. How, how many. Okay. What, what was the allure to get your first piercing, and and how many piercings you got all together? I have like twenty something piercings, and um, uh, I got a piercing for pretty much like my piercings and tattoos are like obstacles I've been through in my life, mm-hmm. life changing events in my life. That's that's what they mean, and they are like you know symbolic meanings behind it, like. People look at me and they see like, oh, you have a gun tattooed on your head, but um, they don't realize like, you know, I just lost, you know, four brothers, you know, three of them to gun violence, you know what I'm saying? And one of them died in a car accident, but, you know, just that loss hit hard. And then up under the gun tattoo is my uh, my ex, my, uh, my wife, we are uh, currently getting a divorce right now. Her name is under there, so it's like... It, it got two different meanings to it. It's like the healing stage, but it's still like an open wound, if that makes sense. Okay, okay. Like all the losses, like back to back, including in my marriage. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm losing, I'm not just losing my wife. I'm losing my wife, my son. I'm losing my friendship. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's a heavy loss on top of my brothers I just lost. Okay, okay. Now what about the- But nobody, I asked you the real question. Now, what about the piercings? Like, I mean, you got a, you got a lot going on. Twenty something, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man! So you got, so you got a piercings on every part of your body, including the, the breasts. No, I didn't. I didn't get those. Oh no, no, no. Uh, I just went to Washington. I know you know about a, uh, um. Candace, uh, yeah. me and her uh, just did a, a a friendship pack. Um, we went and got our uh, vagina pierced or whatever. So I was like, if you go first, I go. Uh, I get back. So 
she went first, and then I went afterwards, and I got mad. So that was one of them I just got does that uh, feel recently. Kind of, then, does that feel kind of awkward sitting there with somebody down there putting the you know putting the piercing in your in in, in your woo woo? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was weird because I end up kneeing the lady. I need her <laughs> real bad, and I had to give her like twenty. I gave her twenty eight dollars for her pain and suffering. Um, yeah, it was real bad. I, I tipped her twenty dollars. I was like, I felt so bad, but it was just a a replay. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't, it wasn't intentional. But hey, that's what's it's, up. A, it's a nice piercing. Like it's, it's real nice. I I can imagine. I can I can imagine. So man, so what was what was the uh what was the what was the first piercing, and what was it what was it like? You know, when you when you decided to get your first piercing. Um, my first piercings was just, you know, I had two earrings on each side and I got those real young because I was teasing my brothers about getting their ears pierced. They was crying like babies. And, uh, mom was like, well, that's why you got to get, you know, four earrings. So that just started to spiral. So when I was, um, I think I was in like sixth grade, I got the top of my ears pierced. Everybody's like, oh, you look like a leprechaun. Then like eighth grade, I got my nose pierced. I was the first person to have my nose pierced just walking through the school and you know everybody oh you look like Tupac now everybody got nose rings right mm-hmm. all those people who said something back then they have the same thing that, that mm-hmm. I had so you wanted right. it all along right but you weren't bold enough to do it when I did it right exactly man alright so the so the culture the, 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 the culture of of being, you know, having piercings and stuff like that. Have you had anybody that came to you and be like, yo, you, you know, what, what's going on with you? You, you just a freak. You just, uh, uh, you All just, the time. Uh, how, how do you handle that? <laughs> All the time. Um, now that I'm older now, like they, when they be like, oh, you probably can't go through the metal detector. I really can. And it's fine. Like I just let them know, like, the joke that you're trying to get off me is not working. You know, um, I'm actually comfortable in the skin I, I am in. Like, I feel highly about myself. Like, when, you're, when you're, your spirit is at an all-time high and your confidence is up, like, it don't even matter. It, it doesn't matter. Like, because maybe it's something about you that gravitated to me to make me feel bad because you really want to be me. Mm. Like, that, that's how I look at it. You don't feel good enough about yourself. If you got to go tear somebody else down to make yourself feel good, you don't feel good enough about yourself. That's what's up. That is what's up. And uh, and you know you got a lot of people in the comments. It's like you damn near fighting for your life in the damn comments, though, for real. Like, I have a lot more people rooting for me than I do, you know, people being negative towards me and, and my look. This is my look. Like, I never wanted to look like nobody else. Like, I, I imagine how I would look as an adult, like, and this pretty much is the, the the vision, the vision of how I thought I would look, and I feel like I'm beautiful. I don't care what nobody else yes, feels. Like, I know I'm beautiful. I give you that. And I, I had this little moment recently where I was like, man, maybe by thirty, I'm just gonna take everything out no. and uh, just do the plain face, like, no. No, just no. to see me. No, and no. I was like, don't change. I don't want to. I'm not gonna change for nobody. But it was just like. I just want to see me like for 30. Like, I just want to see me without all the stuff okay. and see how I feel about that. Not saying it's going to be like forever. Cause you know, I can just drop them back in, but I just wanted to see for like one day. Like it might be my birthday. I just take everything. I do a little photo shoot. Like just see how I look. Just this, plain this, this, with, is with the real, this is the real me right here. Y'all either fuck with me or yeah. you don't. That's how it is. Yeah. That's how it is. Well, Valencia, thank you very much for coming on. Everybody, you guys, you know that the best conversation starts over here at the Lockout Men podcast show. We didn't even have to talk about trucking because that's what she we is. So a truck dr- she's a truck driver. You know what I'm saying? But let me ask you this. Let me just wrap all this up in, in into one truck driving question. When What's you that? step up out of the truck at the fuel island and, 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 you know, people see you, what type of reaction do you get from that? Um, I get people trying to holler at me. I get people looking at me crazy. And ultimately, I'm like, hey, how you doing? You know, like, you all right? <laughs> like, oh, and, you know, the conversation sparks. And then when they get to know the person, 
It's like, man, I prejudged you and I apologize. I get a lot of apologies and I also get a lot of acceptance. So it's like, it's just both. It's a, it's a, you know, battle between both. That's what's up. That's what's up. Because some guys, like, when they see, when they see a person like you stepping out of the truck, they'd be like, you, you can't be a truck driver. Like, mm-hmm. Like you, you can't be a truck like you driver. Drive you, that? <laughs> you, you, you can't be a truck. You must be the girlfriend or the or the passenger. Do you, do you get those type of conversations? Yep, and it's just me and my dog. That's it. <laughs> Jeez, that's all it is. That, that I get that all the time. That's you're so up. small. Uh, oh, and, and then when people meet me and they remember me from off of like social media platforms, they're like, mm-hmm. "Oh my God, I thought you were taller than this." Uh, you are just so pretty in person. Like you were pretty on the videos, but you're pretty in person. I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> like, I don't know if people be thinking I be trying to catfish or it's getting filters and stuff. No, this is me. That's what's up, man. <laughs> that's that's what's up. All right, Valencia. Valencia. I've been pronouncing your name right, right? Yeah, you do. You oh, it. okay. All right. So let them know where they can where they can follow you on your TikTok. Okay, my TikTok is at Chocolate Star. It's C H O C O L A T three S T A R R R. It's three R's and it's a three instead of an E. Chocolate Star. That's Check me out. Um, if you want help to, you know, get the CDLs, hey, hey, I'm I'm here to help. I'm here to answer any questions. I I do it every day. That's something I dedicate my mornings to, trying to help as many people as I can. But remember, I got a life too, and be respectful when you step. That's all I ask for. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, well, you take it easy. Thank you for your time. You too. I really do appreciate it. Go ahead and get back at it. Enjoy your day, and uh, we'll we'll get back together again soon. All right, I'll talk with you later. All right, now. 